Crumble Flam, Part 13, First Half. We can't tell you how pleased we are to have you back, can we, Vivian? Ooh, quite right. <laughs> Thank you, Your Majesties. Yes. Thrilled uh, though we all are, of course. You might have made your return a little less sudden and not ruined my bed into the bargain. I didn't have a lot to say in the matter, did I, Lord Crabtight? I'm so pleased that the spell worked after all. It's never been done before, I'm quite sure. A complete human transpositionalated by magic. Hmm, yes. But how do we know it was complete, eh? Hmm, Sid, did all your bits come with you? Uh, seem to have done. I haven't noticed anything missing. Yes, well, you just wait. When you try and eat lunch, you'll find your stomach still on the ship, or... Ooh. Have you been to the privy yet? Could you stop being so disgusting for ten seconds, Vivian? Please! No, oh, uh, quite right, sorry. We really must get going. The match is due to start soon. That's right, your majesties. I have to be pitch side with my box of liniments, embrocations and vivifying tinctures. What? I'm acting as a match nurse, Lord Crabtite. Me and my healing hands. Don't! Touch me, you weirdo! <laughs> oh, I've missed you lot. And whilst we walk, Sid, allow me to speak a few words into your auditory apparatus. My what? <gasps> Maybe I am missing a bit. I don't think I've one of them. I'm referring to your ear, Sid. Ow. Oh. has finally arrived! Welcome to the first game of the season in this, the Year of the Ferret! The atmosphere is bordering on the hysterical here in the Crumble Flan Arena. Fill my hopes with cards! It seems I'm not the only one looking forward to seeing some serious rock tuck being played. The visiting team the almost unbeatable dream squad, led by the meanest knight on the field, Sir Rufus Raven. It is, of course, the Bumble Crook Bummer! And the plucky underdogs, the fresh-faced hopefuls, our own, our very own, Crumble Flan Crashers! It's sure to be a blistering game and boil my barley in a big bowl. I am rigid with anticipation. Men, we are nobly born. We are chivalric knights. We are men of war, yes. But more importantly, we are men of honor. It is truly beneath us to play these weakling peasants. However, play them we must. Let us not belittle ourselves by showing off. Let us not jeer. Let us not show with our laughter the ease with which we win. That said, any man of theirs is still standing by the end of the first half. I'll take someone's insides out. Brothers! Whilst it is true that you may go out there and lose... What? Yay! Verily! Lose and lose so... So, so terribly. Yet, let this not discourage you, for Rugtuck is not about the winning, but the taking part thereof. Yay! Just as it was with Stirrup the Frail, even though a nearby trouser calf could throw him from his course, did he say nay? when called to defend his city. Nay, good brothers, he stood atop that city wall and blew the horn of warning when he spied the enemy's approach. Tis true that his feeble toot could be heard by no man, and the city was flattened. Still... Yeah, this isn't really inspiring us, Elder Sackcloth. Yet think of this, brothers. Thou shalt step out onto that field 
and thou shalt die. <laughs> what? Yay! Die as boys and be born again as men. Oh, I'm nearly twenty. Just do your best, brothers. I'll be here when you need, if you need me. Bandages, any light repanning, and so on. Blimey, you two really know how to bring a crowd crashing down. Lads, we may not be big, but by God, we're keen. Let's go show these bullies who's boss. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Can I have a swig of that pink pig drink, Grundle Baron? Uh. Mm. Oh, yeah, give us some. Yeah, wow. like... Oh, oh, yes. Here we are, Majesties, the royal box. Ah, allow me to dust your seat, sire, so that you may not tarnish the royal bottom. Perhaps I would you just get out of the way? You're being terribly tiresome, old chap. Right you are, sire. Humblest apologies, groveling contrition. Uh, pray tread, great king, upon my foolish head. <laughs> oh, stop it, man. Over-egging the omelette a bit, me old mucker. What the bleeding heck are you doing in here? This is the royal box, chum. We don't want scruffy old serfs in here. I invited him. You may leave us, Lord Crabtite. You what? Uh, Crabtite? I mean, you what? Your Majesty. Thank you. Pop it. But I... He... Oh! Good. Now then, what was I saying? You were saying all the knights were sent away on a bogus crusade. Oh, yes. And the team we've been able to assemble would hardly make it through a friendly pub match. Against professionals, they'll be stuffed like swans. Swans? <laughs> Different worlds. Well, if you'll pardon me, Your Majesty, I reckon a little further investigation might be required. But I might have to threaten breaking someone's fingers to get to the bottom of it. Whose fingers? Put it this way. You won't miss them if I do have to crush them. In which case, do what you must. Your Majesty. Good Lord! What is it, Vivian? Who is that woman down there dancing about like a crazed lunatic on the edge of the pitch? Um... I think it's Dahlia Mail, sire. Why in blue blazers is she dressed like a tart? She's not dressed as a tart, she's a flan. The crumble flan? She's our mascot. Oh, just when I thought this game couldn't get any more ridiculous. I'll report back shortly, Majesty. Crushes, crushes, there are clan. If they can't break it, no one flan. Uh, can. Sit down, woman. You're embarrassing yourself. And here come the teams onto the field now. Leading the way are the two team captains, Sir Rufus and young Diggory Scab. Now, Rufus, of course, is well known to any who follow the sport. His form is legendary. But Scab, we just don't know. We could see anything from him today. It could be exciting to see him get used as a doormat. I mean, just look at the little squirt. Like a runner bean on stilts, and here comes the referee now. Fling me into the dirt like a sorry sow. That is quite a hat he's wearing. Lord Crumptite, what are you doing out here? Unfortunately, the referee just had a terrible accident. He managed to knock himself out quite violently while showing me his whistle. So I shall step in. How do you manage that? I do not think that this is strictly fair. You will surely be as biased as a mother over her own child. Do you doubt my professionalism, son? It is only that you hail from Crumbleflare. Not so. I'm from Dunwich, mate. Play ball! <laughs> and we're off! And it's Sir Rufus in there like a pig in a trough. And he's lobbed the ball well down the field to Sir Pepperpot, who's caught it with just the kind of ease we've come to expect from this seasoned player. And he's going for a swing at the stake. But no! Pit my tunic to a turret. He's been intercepted by one of the Crumble Flan team. Uh, that'd be. Uh, uh, wait a moment, Fred? Fred the Fruiterer. Clocked Pepperpot's crook with his staff and freed the ball for for um, the fat one who's well he's 
I can only call it gutted it, really, back to centre field. Good heavens, is that crab tight in the black and white striped hat? Uh, how, how big is the hat? Enormous! Well, it probably is then, yes. Where's the referee? I don't know, Ermintrude. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm trying to get comfortable enough over here to have a nap. Why aren't you over here watching the game? Well, because it's tedious. Besides, we've Anselm the announcer right here next to us, giving us a running commentary anyway. Your Majesty. And by Jeffrey, Diggory Scab has got himself and his team, of course, one big fat point. The first of the match, and the bombers don't like that one bit. You can see Rufus is really peeved. <laughs> oh, well done, Diggory. It's early days yet, but press my cape. Young Scab has proved to us all that he is up to the challenge. What a star! A very skinny runt of a star. Wait, no! Shake my staff! The referee has ruled against the point. Can't say I saw anything wrong myself, but I'm sure he knows best. Hello, Baldwin. How's Trix? What's that? It, oh, uh, Trix is fine. I'm not taking any more bets. Game's already begun. Well, I wasn't looking to put on a bet. Well, both things to spend my money on. Well, what money I have, at least. And I wouldn't want to bet with any of my pigs. I wouldn't want to take any of your pigs. What would I do with that if you lost? I have nowhere to keep a pig. And what would you do if I won, eh? If I put a pig down on a ten to one and it came in, you owe me a whole stifle. Look, I'm not betting with pigs. Ever. All right. So the occasion will not arise. All right. I'm just shooting the breeze, mate. Giving the old chin a waggle. I will pack it in with you. I'm trying to watch the game. Yeah, of course. Of course. Sorry. Only I did want to ask you something. Oh, what is it, you numpty? Who did put a bet down on this game? What? I'm not telling you everyone who's done business with me. That's highly sensitive and private information. I we and bail your heed. All right. How about I say a few names and you give me a nod if I guess right? No. You want to give that a little more thought, mate? Yeah, okay, if you're crushing my hand. If you ever had dreams of being a musician, friend, you can start bidding them goodbye. Or you can start being a bit more helpful. All right, all right. Ask your questions. Good boy. Let's go somewhere a little quieter, eh? Pepper Pot, I'm open. Yes. And now for an almighty stake snapping, winner swing. Huh. Oh no, you don't, boy. What? Get your wooden leg off my crook, old man. Who are you calling old? I may be grey on top, lad, but let me tell you, I'm like a 19 year old when it counts. Ask the missus. Remove your leg, or I shall do it for you. Will you now? Oh, very funny. All right, now give it back. Right, I'm not having that. Ref? <laughs> what? What seems? Phew. What seems to be the trouble over here? This great lummox has snapped my leg in half. You need a medic? It's my wooden one. I don't want a medic. I want this ruffian off the ruddy pitch, boy. Right. My ruling is play on. What? Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? What am I meant to do with just one leg, then? Well, you'll have to sit it out, I guess. What? But we haven't any subs. Lord Crab time. At least call off time so he can get his spare leg screwed in. Well, it's highly irregular. So is having a player with a peg leg. Very well. I suppose so. And the referee has just caught half time a little early whilst the players sort out this little roughest. What a game so far. As it stands, neither team has scored a point and not an ounce of blood spilled. Though one wooden leg has been snapped like a brittle twig. I cannot wait to see what the second half brings. By the eye of Redsky, do I need a drink. <laughs> That was Crumble Flam. 
with Callum Hale as King Vivian the Vague and Baldwin the Bookie, Philippa James as Queen Ermintrude the Organised and Dahlia Mail, David Boyle as Lord Crabtight the Cunning and Sir Rufus Raven, Jacqueline Johnson as Grundleburn the Great and Ma Backdraft, Lewis Alcock as Elder Sackcloth, Dylan Alcock as Diggory the Dead Collector, Roger Parkins as Sid the Surf, Wayne Ingram as Fred the Fruiterer, Christian Patterson as Wallace the Welshman, and Sam Young as Anselm the Announcer.